As concerns about karma grow, Pastor e. Enoch Adeboe steps into the plate and meets President Buhari. And the rancor in the ruling party APC is rallying up as the president steps in again. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladende. Welcome, this is Plus Politics. The Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020, popularly known as CAMA, which was signed in early August, faced a lot of criticism from st several stakeholders, particularly the Church. Section 839, subsection 1 and 2 of the newly signed Act, which empowers the Commission to suspend trustees of an association. In this case, the Church and appoint the interim managers to manage the affairs of the association for some given was the major bone of contention for the religious organizations. So our question is, what exactly or why exactly did the new karma provision spark some kind of controversy? Joining us to discuss this is the CEO of Ovation International, Chief Dele Mamadou. Good evening. Good evening, and how are you today? I'm doing great, and, and what about you? Mm. Oh, we thank God always. Uh, we've been working all day, and I'm happy to join you from Lagos this evening. Awesome, uh, and I'm very, very sure that you're keeping safe. Well, let's get the conversation started. Uh, there is a, a, a popular publication that has gone viral over what a lot of people will call unusual position where it was said that uh, you faulted the the government so to say putting so much emphasis trying to run down the church but according to you you felt the government should learn a lot from some of these church leaders what exactly do you mean well i saw the article that has gone viral it was posted by me on uh, Instagram and possibly Facebook, but it, I was not the author of the article. I quoted, I copied it, and I put in quotes. Uh, unfortunately, it was not a signed article, but the article aligned with my thoughts about karma. Hmm. Uh, I was even going to write an article in my this day column last Saturday about the karma that might catch up with the proponents and the defenders of karma. Hmm. And I'll give you my reason. Good. Thank you so we much. We have more than enough problems already in Nigeria. And to now want to add religious conflagration to it. I believe will be irresponsible. I'm not a lawyer. I've read arguments for and against from lawyers. I have discussed, I'm surrounded by friends who are lawyers, and I've read, you know, widely about those who want it and those who don't want it. But mine is purely political and possibly psychological. Okay. And anyone who knows the configuration of Nigeria knows that we have three major issues, three major afflictions. One is the propensity for material acquisition. The second is for religious bigotry. And the third is ethnic jingoism. So, wherever in the world you have a combination of those three afflictions, you are likely to have a terminal disease. So, my advice, and 
and which they don't have to take as always is that let us concentrate one on uniting Nigeria for me that's the most urgent need even bigger than infrastructure development let us unite Nigeria the general insecurity in the land today can be traced to that lack of unity. There is so much division. There is so much hate and hatred. If you're on social media, like I am all the time, you see how people, any little thing, people flare up. We must find a way to douse the tension in the land. And finally, on the issue of religion, we must take it easy. If you ask me, so why can't they regulate the churches? Why can't they regulate the mosques? We all know that the temper and temperament of Muslims are different from that of Christians. We all know that when the chips are done, it will be more difficult for anybody to regulate the mosque than to regulate the churches. And I can tell you, I've seen arguments where they say hey, the mosque uh, there are, nobody owns a mosque, nobody owns, but people own churches, that is where the problem lies. The moment you start comparing religions that are not comparable and they are not compatible, then you are already, again, bringing another division. So those who have argued that uh, there are people who have private jets, maybe Pastor Adeboye, maybe Bishop Oyedepo, that uh, because of that, how can they have jets? There is nothing wrong with it. Okay, if you uh, have been to the redeemed camp, if you have ever been to the redeemed camp, you will see a sprawling city, well organized, well lit, with disciplined people, with a university environment, with a good hotel and everything. So, if they are running business and you want to tax their business, no problem. Okay. I don't think they are running a PLC. So why are you interested in their affairs if they are not running a PLC? That is my only man's argument. Okay, Mr. Momodu, I, I don't want you to exhaust. Uh, to I don't want you to exhaust all the points in your first statement. But I'm happy that uh, you made it one important clarification that you are not the author of that article. It's important that we get. I'm not the author, uh, but and I'm uh, yes, you the endorse it. I, I, I love it. It made a lot of sense. Good. To me. Good. Let me, so it is safe for us to make some uh, excerpts from that uh, statement to get your perspectives like you started on. Now, according to that article, uh, the author did say that 0.01% uh, 0 .0 of the pastors own jets in Nigeria, and we have over 70% who earn less than 50,000 Naira, and uh, it seems that uh, attention is focused on these few people, and they always want to, you know, find a way of putting down these pastors. But I've listened to other arguments who say that why the comparison that when you talk about money that come to church, people easily believe the pastors, but how many people pay their taxes? What's the percentage of people who pay taxes? So, have you considered that uh, argument? It is nobody's business. Church is a voluntary act. I don't go to any church where I pay time. It's my personal decision. So if anybody in his wisdom or stupidity decides to give his money to whosoever pleases him, so what's your business in that? So if you have problems with people who don't pay tax, then you go after them. You understand what I'm saying? So that argument, I am telling you, that argument is so cheeky. And the sad thing is that it promotes hate against the pastors. I don't think any pastor has ever forced anybody to come to church. I'm not, I'm not seeing one. Religion is a voluntary act. My grandparents were Muslims. My parents were Christians. And I have a choice of religion. I go to Redeemed Church when I'm in London. Usually when I'm in Africa, I may not have that time. But that is my decision. And nobody. I have met Pastor Adeboye several times. I have traveled, I've sailed with him on the, a cruise ship from America to Mexico to Jamaica 
to Cayman Islands, and we all bonded as one, about 200 Nigerians on that ship. And nobody ever asked me to come and pay a cobble. Nobody ever disturbed my life. I remember we all eat dinner together, you know, during the cruise ship, you know, during our, 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 our cruise. They come, they bring our food, and they ask, do you want wine? A lot of people are afraid because they are seeing Pastor Debo in front of them. I asked for my wine. No, Pastor Debo never disturbed me. If I one day, I'll give you a joke. Someone told me that Mommy Gio wanted to see me on the ship, and they already concluded that they want to complain about that I take wine. Only for me to get to Mommy Gio, Mommy Gio was praising innovation. These are decent human beings. So you cannot say because you are jealous, who amongst us does not pray to only get if you can afford it? Hmm. Why do we make pastors pastor? If you give your money to pastor, it is your business. Okay, let's... Another thing, let me tell you. I remember this issue of private jet or no private jet. Someone had a blistering attack against Daddy Gio, Pastor Adeboye. And I wrote an article in this day. I said... Whosoever says Pastor Adeboye does not need the jet is ignorant. Because even me, one day I was going to Seychelles. I left Ghana in the morning to come and take my flight. We were going for a wedding of a family friend. We got to Lagos. By the time I got to Lagos, they said I just missed my Kenya Airways flight. I went to Kenya Airways office. They said, oh, sorry, sir, you missed our flight. But there is a flight in the evening from Ghana that can still get you to Kenya tomorrow morning. I went back to Ghana. By the time I got to Ghana, we were supposed to fly maybe at about 9, 10 p.m. The flight did not arrive until 4 a.m. At 5 a.m., we boarded. Then they said, oh, there is no aviation fuel in Ghana. Then they brought us to Nigeria. From Nigeria, we went eventually to... By the time I got to Kenya, I missed my connection to Seychelles. That is what people face. Anybody who understands flying, we know that a pastor who is ministering to virtually over 100 churches, over in fact, thousands of churches are in over 100 countries, needs a jet to perform his duty. Okay. Uh, uh, and Mr. Dele Momodo, I'm sure the people who uh, still want to argue with you will still argue with you on this. But let's look at other issues so that we can see how we can exhaust... Let's look at another issue that the author mentioned. For now, he's still an anonymous author, except you're able to help us with the name. Now, another thing he said is that when you talk about stable electricity in Canaan land, when you talk about water supply for 15,000 residents, and um, they are also planning ways to electricity, these are the language we hear from people from time to time that Nigeria is working towards this, Nigeria is working towards that. Another argument from this side is that don't compare that small hectares of land with the large span Nigeria of 200 million people. So um, is, there, is there a justification, so to say? I personally will never compare a small church to a country. Just like I will not compare Rwanda to Nigeria. But I still have a right to say Rwanda has electricity. It doesn't mean I'm comparing. I still have a right to say Ghana lost their electricity and in two years they were able to have a 24 megawatts added to it. And they, you understand? It, it, and it, Nigerians are so sensitive sometimes that once you say something now, if I say Jonathan is a good man, then somebody says, I am fighting Buhari. No. Hmm. Saying somebody is good does not mean the other person is bad. I'm saying what I know about you personally. And I can tell you that Bishop Oyedepo's church today has a university that is rated amongst the best in our country. So what is wrong with that? How does that mean that I'm comparing him to someone else? I went last year to deliver a lecture at Mountain Top University. So does that mean that I am saying the church or the pastor is better than others? I gave a lecture also in Niwo at the Baptist uh, University in Niwo. You know, does that mean I'm saying the pastor is better? So the truth is, even a lot of us, I went to a Catholic school as a young boy in the late St. John's Grammar School. 
I can tell you that St. John's Grammar School was far better than what we have today when it was under the Catholic missionaries. So why can't we try and appreciate these people? Why can't we encourage more of such? In fact, maybe Nigeria would have collapsed, but for the uh, private sector, if we run Nigeria the way we all run our homes and businesses, substantially things would improve. Okay. But everybody gets power and then begin to run it anyhow because it is not my Mr. own. Mr. So I would I would rather encourage more Oyedepos in Nigeria. I will definitely encourage more Olukoyas in Nigeria. I will encourage more Yadras in Nigeria who are doing charity work, you know. SIJE Foundation and all that. Okay. I will encourage uh, Mr. Momodu, nothing wrong with it. Still, still, still on the still on the school of thought. I'm happy that uh, there is a kind, a small kind of departure from your stand and the author stand. Another thing the author did say is that uh, he mentioned things like, um, okay, I think you talked about that the 25 megawatts to when Nigeria is still struggling with 7,000 megawatts. But still on these schools, the argument again is. How many people will remind us when the missionaries came and how they gave free education and how government is struggling to give free education compared to this Covenant University, compared to some of these private universities that a good number of people cannot afford? So what exactly are you calling for in clear times? Are you calling for real capitalism or welfareism? You know, that is I remember Chief Moshu Dabiola saying that nobody should glamorize poverty. Hmm. What we are encouraging is poverty mentality. Okay? Everywhere in the world, there are private schools, some call it public schools like in England, and you have to pay. It doesn't matter whether you are poor or not, if that's your dream, or you get a scholarship. Okay? In Nigeria today, it should be the duty of government to at least provide free quality education because I don't believe that it should just be free. It should, there should be quality education, primary, secondary, so that you, we can catch them young. The universities, of course, nobody has forced anybody to go to Babcock or any of the missionary universities. There are other universities. If there is there, uni like they're all there. Unsuka is there, Abu is there. They're all there. So it's a matter of choice. Please, let's stop all these witch hunt. If you run a private organization, I don't want to call it company because you cannot describe a church as a company, but if you run a private organization and if it's a church or a mosque, please, for God's sake, let's allow those who want to go, to go, and those who don't want to go, not to go. Because what will happen when you say you are going to appoint trustees for a church? I know Nigeria. We make laws sometimes with predetermined motive. That is, look, there is a proverb in Yoruba that a woman whose child has been killed before by a witch will always suspect every woman. Hmm. So the suspicion, what is leading to all this, when they say, eh, but in Europe they regulate them, but do, you, do we have this kind of religious conflagration? In London, you have a mayor who is a Muslim, it has never happened. Do you understand? So people are able to resolve their situation. What is going on in Kaduna now? Is it going on in, in, in London or in America? So let's begin to tolerate ourselves. When that happens, no, nobody will suspect. When you appoint judges, and then overnight, in the middle of the night, you can remove them and find enough laws for justification, to justify the removal without going through what all these noble people will consider as due process, then mm. don't be surprised if people are saying tomorrow they might mistakenly, just the same way we've seen even dead people appointed in Nigeria, tomorrow you might find a Muslim coming to regulate a church or a Christian coming to regulate a mosque. And then what will happen? breakdown of law and order. Let us do laws that if we don't have electricity in the next two years, we are going to appoint a board of trustees for the government to take over the running of the affairs of Nigeria. 
Let us make laws that will say in the next few years, if there is no water or housing in Nigeria, the government will abdicate from the throne and then we will have board of trustees to manage Nigeria. When you do that, you will see that okay. a lot of people will support it. Mr. Momodu, let's, let's, uh, let's go home with some clear messages, especially for those who are watching, because uh, want, we don't want to leave them hanging. How, in practical terms, can the government, which is actually the cross of the, 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 the article by this anonymous author, how can the government learn from those religious leaders uh, I agree that it is from the microcosm that you have a bigger picture. So how do we, you know, learn? Because some will say it's easy to tell your followers what to do, but we have this kind of heterogeneous society that you just painted. We have people who have different uh, religious sentiments. So how do we pick some kind of lessons from them? Oh, there is so much lesson to learn. You will not see any church that will hand over its operations to stack illiterates and say, come and manage our accounts, come and manage our affairs, or they want to tie a road within their premises and then they go and give it to someone who will do a shoddy job and two, within two months there will be potholes everywhere in a church. In fact, the church and the most that I know teach you to be good and responsible human beings. You see people when they're going to church. Ordinarily, they don't wear their suit or tie or dress well, but that is what they call a church dressing. And what it means is that you cannot go to a church and appear like a shabby person. Government should learn. Also, they try to balance everything. In Nigeria today, appointments are so lopsided that people are bitter. But because they don't have a choice and they know that if they speak, they might be fired, then you will see that everybody will sit up. Let us begin to act responsibly. Let us lay more emphasis. Do you know how many bills were passed and sent to the presidency under the Senate president, the, the former Senate president, Bukola Saraki? So what happened to those bills? So why are we rushing in this one that has something to do with religion? And don't forget that there are pastors today who are reading the good book in the bad books of the government. There are targets. And you know, you and I know for a fact that in Nigeria, the day they decide to remove a pastor, it will not take 24 hours. And there will be more than enough people, enough bad belly as they call it, Okay, in pidgin English, people who will stand up and say, yeah, the pastor is a useless man, or kill him, roast him. That is mm. the thing, divide and rule tactics. And that is what some of us are trying to prevent, that don't come and use any law. Let's concentrate on rebuilding Nigeria. We have more than enough things to do, rather than fighting religious wars. And my advice, especially to those who are defending and support this thing, is that we've seen it all before. When you think you are comfortable and you it will not affect you, then one day it will affect you or affect someone very close to you, then you will start crying. And mm -hmm. I will give the example. I remember when we used to shout that Ibrahim Magu, stop trying people on the pages of newspapers. Do your job go to court, get your conviction, and everything will be fine. Two weeks ago, I saw reports that the man was pleading that he should be given a fair trial. I support that. So support the rule of law, whether your friends are involved or your enemies are involved, mm. and we shall all live in peace. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Dele Momodu, CEO of Vision International. Thank you for your perspective. Trust me, the conversation will continue from time to time. And I await your article. And let's hope that it will also throw more light on your intervention on this matter. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Have a lovely evening. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and uh, to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, President Buhari bemoans recurrent conflicts in the APC. That is next 
for discussion. Please don't go anywhere.